Hello everyone, I am Anumit Kumar. Welcome to Key Concepts. This is a course introduction video for how to design uh, VLDC and PMSM ceiling fan motors. So, target audience for this lecture is engineering student, uh, product design engineers, technical managers, working professionals in ceiling fan as well as different motor industries. Before starting this uh, lecture series, I am making some assumptions that we have some basic understanding of AC and DC motor operations. The course consists of nine lectures where I sequentially covered uh, the differentiation between these two motors with respect to construction, with respect to control methodologies, with respect to different hardware architectures. And finally, I just covered what are the different design challenges we face with by designing the ceiling fan motors, what are the testing methods available and what are the common frequently asked questions and issues faced with this design. The first lecture basically covered with uh, differentiation between these two motors basically that stand for permanent magnet synchronous motor and brushless direct current motors. Even though these two motors belong to the same synchronous motor family that is AC motor family but it's still they have the terminology of uh, DC direct current and where we have the synchronous motor. So why so called these two motors are different? Why we called it as a VLDC? Why we called it as a PMSM? So this particular concept I am going to cover in this first session. The next session I am going to cover when these motors are originated and in which first applications they use it and uh, after that, what are the different uh, development happens, okay? And then I'm going to cover what is the difference between these two motors. How we differentiate these two motors with respect to their efficiency, with respect to their operating principle, with respect to their size. There are a lot of different aspects. So I'm going to cover this whole things in this session. So uh, next is lecture number two. Uh, in this lecture mostly I am going to cover the working principle of these two motors and where the first aspect is motor. So what is the most motor construction and then I am going to cover as a complete product how these motor operates. The same thing with uh, PMSM motor. I am going to provide you the basic information about the motor construction and then the motor operating principle and then I'm going to cover the where the these two motors are used actually what are the applications aspects of these two motors and why we use PMSM why we use BLDC so all answers I'm going to cover in this lecture. Lecture number three I'm going to cover some more construction designs with respect to rotors what are the possible rotor designs available with pmsm something like uh, like uh, ipm motor spm motors okay so i'm going to uh, reveal the concept why these two different type of rotors are available what are the status and how we design these type of status while designing these type of status what are the key concepts that we have to understand okay the next is like we have to understand the binding once we talk about the motor the major aspect is binding so in pmsm we are using uh, like different type of binding so i'm going to different uh, i'm going to discuss all these things in very brief so Okay, so next session will be the control drives and what are the possible hardwares that we have. So mostly for uh, AC to DC conversion, we have some SMPAs like in input will be like 230 volt and output will be like 24 volt, sometime 12 volt, sometime 48 volt and sometime 325 volt DC. Okay. So uh, these are the mostly uh, DC power supply that is actually a DC voltage and then we have to feed these all uh, voltage to the motor drive and then motor drive provide a three phase supply to your VLDC motors. Okay. 
and definitely MCUs most of time that depends if we have uh, some control like remote control methodology, some app control and different type of features that will be covered by 8-bit microcontrollers. Lecture number 4, I am going to cover what are the possible control uh, methodologies available for PMSM and VLDC motors. Why we need these type, different type of methodologies for different motors. If we have one motor method, why we need another one? So I'm going to cover, I'm going to uh, provide you the very brief idea why we need different type of methods to control the motors. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to cover the what are the possible uh, like control methodologies are available for uh, VLDC. Now this six step control for VLDC. Sometimes vector control are used with uh, where, where the more uh, precise control or uh, like uh, a very efficient control is required then we go for the vector control methods for uh, VLDC and then I'm going to discuss about uh, what are the famous control methodologies are available. PMSM motor control strategy can mostly consist of uh, uh, like sinusoidal PWM methods and more, more mostly use uh, field oriented control so in selling fan it's a low cost application uh, so definitely it's a cost conscious market so we uh, need uh, as lower possible price for the motor control so mostly this one is uh, more cheaper compared to the foc okay so uh, this I will going to discuss what are the possible hardware available for these uh, type of method based controls okay and what are the possible uh, hardware available with FOC okay. Lecture number five I'm, five I'm going to cover like uh, what are the different hardware architectures available for PMSM motor control. The PMSM motor control, if we talk about it, why we need different type of hardware architecture? Okay, if we have some architecture, if we consider we have one MCU, we have one uh, gate driver, we have some MOSFET, mostly uh, six MOSFET we are using it, mostly uh, N type, N channel basically we can say, okay, N channel. So, okay. So if we have some method, why we need another one? Why we need this method? Why we need this architecture? Why we need uh, this architecture? Okay. Why we need as a single chip solution? Why we need this one? So we have to understand as per application we have to use. So I'm going to reveal all those concepts in this lecture. So lecture number six, I'm going to cover some reference design. So that will provide you uh, some good idea about uh, like which type of uh, uh, like uh, stator and rotor combinations are possible for uh, ceiling fan application which one is more suitable for which combination is having uh, like uh, more advantage why we selecting that particular combination so we are going to reveal this whole concept in this lecture okay the next session will be the motor operating voltage like uh, like I talked earlier uh, they, well, they have some different uh, voltages 12 volt, 24 volt, 48 volt but mostly in ceiling fan we are covering it at 24 volt. So why? So if we cover it if 24 volt we have and we consider it as a 2 amperes so it's something like 48 so we can say it at if we consider it 1.5 like something if while 24 volt uh, motor and then the current handling we need to take 1.5 so it just comes nearly about 35 or something like that okay so if we using uh, 12 volt so the current is getter higher so we need to handle the higher current and that will increase the cost okay the one session if we in, uh, more or less if increase the 48 so more popular way to use 24 volt most of company uh, develop their motor on 24 volt input only so, so called that is called low voltage design. Okay. The next uh, session will be 30 retake. So, uh, next will be the DC output will be 325 volt DC. Uh, this is actually nothing. It's uh, considering 230 multiplied by root 2. 
okay so that's something about uh, 325 volt dc so after rectifier we directly use this uh, uh, voltage to mosfet drain to source section so we directly we switching this voltage and directly feed it to the motor so this is called so called high voltage design next will be control drives methods uh, okay uh, as a reference they are two mostly famous uh, uh, like methodologies used for uh, like ceiling fan uh, the pms like uh, sine wave uh, pwm converter or sine wave drives we have so it doesn't have any feedback or any precise control so we can use it so i'm going to discuss what are the different uh, companies available with their architecture so i'm going to cover it in this session in foc we we have some uh, uh, reference design and few companies uh, they are offering this uh, ceiling fan uh, motor with foc control so we are going to reveal that concept in this lecture also lecture 7 uh, we are going to discuss what are the possible design uh, challenges faced by uh, like manufacturers as well as design engineers so i am going to cover this two things in a two aspect first is uh, motor and another is control drives the motor mostly related to the performance it's all about uh, we can say it it's uh, it's a design related factor when we talk about the binding tolerance and all that is uh, related to mostly uh, production and when we'll talk about the mo motor assembly that is also related to uh, production only okay so these are the major issues which is faced by the manufacturers so there are in that lot of different qualities who are there that we need to consider in the detailing lecture okay and then i am going to cover the drive aspects like uh, the drive consist of the smps uh, design and uh, that consist of uh, issues faced by the lower surge value they have they they didn't not they are not able to handle high volt high surges uh, voltage surges it has some issue with the snubber circuits and uh, they have some issue with the input protection so these are the issues or the challenges that face by the manufacturers as well as design engineers the another major issue with the motor tuning if you if you have some motor and a motor have some tolerance the tuning these motors are really become much more difficult and uh, uh, the support part is also important so very few persons have a good skill like better understanding of motor tuning so that is also create some limitation so in lecture 8 i am going to finally uh, provide some basic guideline for the product testing um if we talk about the different is standards or a different uh, methods there are a lot of brief methods are there but i am not going to discuss these things because ceiling fan is not that much uh, you can say precise product it's a very uh, usual one low cost product so that doesn't required any uh, like specific specific type of uh, testing method so i try to cover this in the in, uh, two session first is the performance another is reliability okay performance is major once you design your motor you have to see your motor is whether it's achieving the desired performance or so whether you get it or not we have to test it while uh, as a physical way when we talk about the power supply efficiency mostly uh, 89 to 90% uh, power supply like yes, mostly i'm this is mostly i'm talking about uh, smps okay uh smps okay this is smps mostly i'm talking about okay and once we uh, once we see these two things are perfectly okay then we uh, we have to manufacture the complete product and uh, then we have to check as a complete product whether it's matching the like uh, minimum requirement of air delivery cmm okay by how much what is it consuming that considered to be the service value so it should be match the required service value okay so when we talk about the next stage will be uh, surge protection like once we talk about the reliability we always talk about the maximum how much voltage surge it can pass so as we talk about most of the projects it's required uh, 4 to 6 kv protections okay and uh, as a plans 2.5 is okay but abhi to be didn't consider like whether persons are using it uh, to the industry or uh, like we can say it's they are using it in a 
डोमेस्टिक पर्पस ओके सो दैट इज अ बेस कैरेक्टरी फोर के बी मोस्टली मैनुफैक्चर आर यूजिंग इट सो दैट यू कैन कंसिडर ओके so next is a thermal testing once you once we have running it so uh, there are two methods where, where you can use some oven or something where 50 degree uh, like uh, you can say celsius is there and you keep your driver inside it and uh, uh, take it out some uh, like probes thermal probes so you can uh, get the temperature of uh, you can say uh, mosfet okay uh, like uh, inductor if we have we can so for transformers and then the like motor motor drivers like what are the motor drivers that we are using so that is uh, like the temp the measuring these temperature is very much required if is it is greater than the ambient temperature then definitely the uh, it's comes in the range red zone and definitely the possibility of failure is higher okay uh, next uh, these two are basically uh, continuous or uh, you can say the running test okay where we uh, mostly conduct uh, burning test while continuously con con continuously running these two motors so like uh, if we say uh, like uh, 230 volt okay is the input ac voltage and we are running this motor for like 100 hours 100 hours okay and then we have uh, another voltage we using something like 140 volt or some 100 volt okay that depends some higher voltage side we can say 270 volt so at different input voltages we uh, keep running this motor for different 100 hours or uh, so it can help you to understand uh, whether the motor is sustaining for the long duration of running or not okay and the another is like switching test basically concerned with your uh, while you running the motor and keep it uh, for switching like after some time it get off then again it start so continuously why we are using this type of uh, switching that will provide you the proper reliability for your electronics whether your electronic is sustainable for this type of activity if sustainable then uh, definitely uh, your design is uh, very close to uh, you can say it's uh, it's a better design okay so these tests definitely help you to provide a better guideline how to design a proper product if you face any issue with these two these steps then we have to uh, like uh, you have to solve the issue and then uh, like you have to meet the actual required performance so number 9 uh, mostly i am going to cover the frequently asked questions uh, that is basically based on the issues faced uh by manufacturers motor designers some different related to motor okay something like you can say uh we are going to take some questions related to control and uh, if we talk if we sell this product to the market what are the issues faced by the service engineers or a different uh, aspect of service what are the like teaching or uh, like you can say the what are the issues faced at uh, customer or uh, what are the issues faced by customer so all those things i am going to cover and definitely i am working looking for more good questions that you have you please uh, like uh, follow my video and try to cover the whole nine lectures and, and definitely that will provide you very brief idea about whole product and i will make in sure that you don't if you go to the any uh, lecture series you didn't find these type of videos in a single lecture or in a single course they will be openly providing all those technical details so please take it as a priority please subscribe my channel and please follow all those nine lectures so that definitely these lectures will help you to create a very good understanding of uh product development related to ceiling fan and once you understand the ceiling fan product development definitely you can design any type of product okay so more or less concepts are always same only few modifications and some customizations are happen so that doesn't matter okay so please stay tuned with us try to cover our whole nine lectures so that will definitely help you or help you understand the concepts okay thank you thank you for watching my videos